So yeah, the, the idea is just to, I mean, it, I, I literally just like, I want to get something to where it's different than just crashes. And part of it is, is I have that motorcycle training concepts and I'm trying to figure out, you know, what brand would work great with just information gathering. Yeah. And that's basically what I want to do here. And, and the idea that I had for specifically Dan Dan, the fireman would be finding people local that are new riders uh -huh. that have been riding around town. It's like, let's go for a ride. And I'm just kind of talking to them and, and I'm like, what, when we get to an intersection, Hey, there's an intersection. There's a person coming right. So I'm just going to present real quick. And then I go back to my conversation. Gotcha. So it's like a, like a helpful thing for them. And then other people get to see it, but then also people get to hear who they are, you know, cause there's a lot of new riders that are like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it because of this, this, and this. And so if like I ride with a little girl, a uh -huh. little girl, a little woman, <laughs> and they could barely tiptoe and whatever. And so I talk to them and they're like, oh, I could do it. So yeah. then that's the, the goal that I have. So with you, um, the goal is just to have a normal conversation and just kind of get to get your perspective, kind of like what we did with our conversation at the, at, uh, damn. <laughs> well, like I said, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me. <laughs> no, it's going to be good. Don't worry. And so, yeah, that'll be my goal. I guess we can start riding and talking. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I think uh, just the way I, I look at the traffic around me yeah. is probably a little bit different. Yeah. And I think for newer riders, being able to decipher what the hell they're looking at mm -hmm. is hugely important because there's just so much crap to look at. And then think about while riding. It's like you're trying to shift, you're trying to look, you're trying to use your turn signal, you're trying to brake, you're trying to just do everything. Yeah, it's it's information overload. And and that's what I really like about what you have been doing because you're, you're doing a lot of track stuff. So uh, yeah. me, I mean, it's all been in town and just kind of commuting and that's my focus is just commuting to work, you know, keeping people that need to just go to work and they have a motorcycle, they want to take it, how do they stay safe? And, and I understand that there's different levels of training that could still apply to that. Yeah. And that's, I don't have time to do that, but right. I know a lot of my viewers and stuff want to do track days and they want to do things that will increase their, their safety. Yeah. So for you, like, what you've done track days so like a little bit i guess a little back history on you like what is it that obviously you got a nice panic galley v4 and <laughs> <laughs> so this doesn't actually go to the track this speciality uh stays pretty goes around shows off whatever the aprilia is what goes to the track That's okay more more tame it's a lot more usable uh this throttles a lot more smooth because in first gear this thing does some weird stuff so uh. on the track it's a little it's a bit of a handful <laughs> So like at the track, uh, like well, how many? I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter how many times because, I mean, I could be riding twenty thousand miles and all twenty thousand be terrible, you yeah. know. So, so yeah, what have you like? What do you equate like track days to? So when I go to a track day, I try to do something that uh, improves the skill. And okay. the biggest thing that I've been working on the past at least two track days has been one, my body positioning. Uh, because on the street it is totally different than on the track. Okay. You can, everything's more exaggerated. And then the other really, really big thing that really translates to the street is vision. Mm -hmm. I people look at their noses and just in front of them. Well, when you're traveling at speed on a track, that ain't enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to miss your turn. You're going to miss your apex. So we're going right here, right? Yes. All right, cool. And you're gonna blast through it. And if you're slow on everything well once you miss the turns you tend to try to overcorrect, and that's how people have bad days at a track yeah it the sounds a lot like uh, on a on a on a regular road going too yeah. fast i mean yeah and that translates perfectly to the street because like you know we look at the car in front of us right now yeah well i've also looked at the car that just went around the turns a black suv so you work your way back it's the same thing you do on a track so you you saw something like super far correct and anticipate i mean that that's at least 20 seconds i mean at this speed yeah that's that's important to you like on a track too it's it's you got to see like where people kind of disappear or how, what are you doing when you see that like are you determining the so the like road that Civic just made a right hand turn up in front of us yeah you can see that from where we we're at back at the light and you know on a track 
you see someone either break early or break hard or you see that someone isn't actually going that fast and you're going much faster than them you can judge speed that way okay and it happens on the track you get newer riders i mean heck myself i got blown by a few times so those riders that are passing me obviously could see me at a distance so you you say you go there and you you practice something specific do you spend right. all day on that or is it because i i'm thinking about like going to the gym and it's like well i'm gonna hit chest back and legs you know or like you know quads and and, and biceps or whatever you know is that is that kind of what you're doing on, on a track day yeah it's exactly like that you know the beautiful thing about riding especially whether it's track street or whatever it's a lifelong thing you're never going to be perfect at it yeah so you go to a track and like i said body positioning it's always going to improve you're always going to find better ways more efficient ways to move around vision you always can be faster at how you look and better reading turns and things like that so yeah i i pick something and stick with it that day it, you may seem like well you go to the gym you're not just gonna do like the same rep over and over again but you gotta think you're hitting a turn differently yeah. every time so that stuff actually changes okay yeah the, the uh when i when i hear about people working out because you know there's a lot of people that just go to the gym and they just they have no freaking clue what they're doing and they just you know i'm gonna do bench you know all day today or i'm gonna do this all day today. there's no real direction it's like they're putting their ladder on the wrong wall right so they're working right. hard climbing that ladder on the wrong wall so for for like a track day would it be advisable for someone just to show up like how does that work or is there more like a coach like you should take like a coach track day so you know what to work on so then you come the next time and the next time and the next time with like a plan you know what i mean like a training plan so you go to track days and there are coaches out there and i highly recommend seeking them out some okay. of them require you to pay for it some of them they'll let you do uh what they call lead follow which is essentially what you and i are doing right now i stay behind you and i kind of follow your lines okay and if you've never been to a track that specific track i highly recommend it because you don't know where braking zones are. You don't know where the apexes are. Uh, they set up cones around the track to tell you apex and vision. And if you don't know that, you're gonna see cones and wonder what the heck these are. Oh, okay. So, you know, they have coaches that'll, you know, do exactly that for free. And then you can obviously pay for more in-depth one-on-one training if you want. Yeah. I, I absolutely recommend doing that. Whether it's your first track day or a hundredth, you're always gonna learn something. Okay. So like, is there a time where you're just like, you know what, I'm, I, I don't want to learn anything new. I just want to refine what I have learned. So you're saying you go to the track and you're going to work on body position. So is there do the track, I, I, I'm speaking from zero experience at the track. And I think this is like amazing for me to even hear because it sounds more like it's a training session, not a let's just show up and go around type thing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, because that to me, like when I hear about people going to the mountains, it's, it's a show up and let's around type thing. Yeah, it is. So <laughs> it, it kind of put me off on track days. I don't have no idea how I connected it to a track day, but I did. And maybe it's because you're going as you know as fast as you can, or you're you're doing some advanced things on some twisties, and you're and you're making it a dedicated day. But now that I'm kind of hearing more and more about it, the more it's it's. You're literally training to be as safe as possible on a motorcycle, whether it's on the track or in the street. And you're training specifically for a purpose. Um, if you go out to the mountains, and what we're, kind of what we're doing here, it feels like we're just going for a ride, having fun. There's no training. It's almost like you could relax completely, which you shouldn't, you know, because you, <laughs> you go out of, you, you, you zone out, so that's not a good thing. <laughs> but uh, it sounds like the, I like the fact that you have to train for something. You know, I come from the fire service, so it's like we we have to train, and it's like we have a purpose for it. So track days sound pretty damn amazing. It does. Um, you know, like you said, there is that perception, and there are those that go there just to mess around, and they're dangerous on the track. But a majority of the people aren't that way. If okay. they see that you're doing something dangerous or that you're doing something that is actually harmful to yourself or to others on the track, they're actually gonna to come to you and say, hey, follow me. Because yeah. they're out there too, and the last thing they wanna do is be ripping around and turn and have some, some guy 
stand them up in the middle of the turn and run them off the track. That's the last thing they want to have happen. So, if, you know, it, it's for their best interest to teach you how to do things properly. And, you know, when you go there for the first time, take your time, watch people, and you can see the ones that are fast but do really, really sketchy things. Like they never turn in a weird spot, they come out of it at a weird spot. Yeah. Like if it doesn't look right to you, I probably wouldn't take suggestions from them. <laughs> you know, and that's take a scary that analytical thing. second and go, okay, this person's fast, but why are they fast? Yeah, and that, that's a tough thing to ask yourself, especially if you're a beginner. Um, because, I mean, I, I, I work with beginner, beginner, beginners. So I'm assuming, right. is a track day, like, could you go there as a beginner, 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 or is Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. It's, you know, it's, it's intimidating, and I'm not gonna lie, you know, the, the first couple times I went out, I'm on a big bike, I'm expected to be fast, mm -hmm. but I did a lead follow, you mentioned Ego, I did a lead follow with the KTM 390. <laughs> I should smoke that bike in every sense of the word smoking a bike. Yeah. And they taught me a lot. <laughs> so, oh wow, so it was, it was a humbling experience for exactly. somebody with experience too? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that... You know, you, you can ride for 15 years and then go to the track one time and realize how not good of a rider you are. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's it's a great experience, especially that's why I'm saying a new rider would be perfect because you don't have that ego already. You're still learning and you realize you're learning. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's great. A blank slate is very important. So, I mean, like as somebody with experience, I mean, you, you might like for me pers personally, when I when I start something new, I and I have experience at least a little bit with it that can kind of cross train. I do have somewhat of an ego of, hey, I kind of know this already. Let's move on to the next thing. But I know from having a, being in the fire service, basically having to be humble about it no matter what. I've gone through three academies, two different departments, knowing already that you have to be humble and kind of wipe yourself clean. And just because you do know something will just make it to where you're more efficient learning. Uh, but you do have to start over. So I, I like the fact that, that you were able to do something and it kind of not, not humbling sounds bad, but it's it's true. It humbles no, it's, you, and then, it's absolutely true. And it's very important to learn. So I mean, like a new rider, I mean, geez, it sounds like they are gonna gain so much. You, the, <laughs> I can't stress enough. It's in a place where you can do stuff that you can't do on the street. You can't do in a parking lot. You can't yeah. do because you can actually go work on your braking techniques and everything else like you do anywhere else. And then you can go out to the track and do it at speed. Yeah, that, I think that's the biggest thing that I'm starting to really realize is that, is, uh, I mean, just even this road right here. I mean, you can't do this in a parking lot. And so how are you gonna practice? The, I'm gonna go ahead and go. Yep. Uh, you can't even practice like, I don't know, a 45 mile an hour swerve or a 45 mile an hour braking in a parking lot unless you have like a drag strip. Right. So it, it's for me, it's good to have those fundamentals of knowing how to progressively brake and how to swerve and, and stuff in a parking lot at slow speeds because it's, it's a little bit safe compared to this road. But I guess, yeah, the track is like having this road by yourself and practicing. Yep. Um, that's amazing. I didn't even really put two and two together, which I should have. I'm kind of an idiot. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's uh, you know, like you said, a lot of people come at it with the same mindset you do that you have to haul ass, you have to be fast. And, you know, I still had that particular idea myself. And you just got to be realistic, get out of your own way, and uh, be open to learn. Yeah. And we that's got, the we got best this thing. Turner. There's always going to be somebody better than you. Mm -hmm. So when you, when, you go there, <laughs> when you go there and, and you have, like, this guy on the RC390 doing a, doing a ride with you and you're getting humbled and everything, uh, after that, I mean, do you, do you just stay there all day? Is it like an all day thing? Like, is it a, you only get like two hours or? Uh, so yeah, it's all day. Uh, some of them are like nine to 5 p.m. They break them up into sessions at 20 or 30 minute sessions. And then you can choose. You don't need to be out all 30 minutes, but if you go out, say you do a lead follow, you come back, you can talk with the rider in front of you that, you, that was doing the lead follow, kind of do a little quick debrief and then go back out again. Okay. So it breaks up. Uh, me personally, when I go, I'll do kind of like the first or second session. I'll take another session off and then I'll start really working in the later sessions of the day because 
when you go there, most people want to bang out the first couple sessions of the day. They're out of gas, literally and, and physically, they're out of gas. <laughs> yeah. And you've had time to kind of digest what you've done and really go out there and work on a pretty empty track. So okay. that's just kind of how I go about it. I like, I like having an empty track to play around with. So I like to do the later sessions of the it, track it, day. It literally sounds like a gym. It's yeah, like, oh yeah, it's very similar in the mindset. <laughs> yeah, you're you're like everyone goes in the first thing in the morning at the gym because they got to get to work afterwards. So you go like at like 11 noon or whatever, right before everyone gets there, and you have a whole gym to yourself. I mean, that's what it sounds like at a at a track. Yeah, it's very similar. You know, you go there to, with the purpose of training, and just like a gym, you have wabos that'll go there and stand in the mirror the whole time, and you're like, get out of the way. Yeah, it's the same same thing happens at a track. There's people you don't want to be around, and there's people you do. So when I can equate it to to a gym, and that's how I like to do things. It's like okay, it's something I do know, and now it's starting to sound like that. I when I hear about a gym, it's like let's say I'm like I am out of shape, but let's say I haven't gone to the gym in forever. I've never been to the gym. There is that intimidation of everyone's looking, everyone's watching. Am I doing it right? You know, what do I do? And when it comes to a track, I feel like that would be the same fear that I would have going to the track. And you're saying, yeah, it's intimidating, but there are friendly people there. There are people that do act like hooligans, but it's more of like a self-regulating culture. And it's it's is it is it inclusive to new riders? Is it is it wel welcoming? At least that you have felt. Uh, uh, from what I've experienced, yes, you know, and I haven't found anyone that kind of felt distanced by anybody. Um, most track days have three different levels of riding skills okay. and you go out per, per that group. So if you're a new rider, you're going to go out with a bunch of new riders. Okay. Uh, the ones that I've done, you know, I've been fortunate to go to a private track and kind of have uh, everyone out there of varying skill levels from me to friggin' pro racers. So, you know, I've gotten to experience that, but for the most part, you're going to go out and see a group, the novice and you're gonna have a coach out there and you can probably just follow them around. That's cool, yeah. yeah. And then they'll give you like pointers and, and little things that they recognize or if you have a question, it's like, hey, how can I take this turn? Uh, how you took, whatever, you know, whatever the question is. So would they give you th like action items to work on uh, throughout the day or the next time you show up? Or? Yeah, so uh, like I said, there's, there's a ton of sessions out there. And, or during a track, there's a ton of sessions. Yeah. And if you go to a coach, you're like, hey man, can you watch me through this turn? I feel like I'm doing it weird or something like that. They'll go out there and follow you and watch you. They'll talk to you afterwards. And then if you want, they'll go out and you follow them and see what the heck they do. Okay. So yeah, you just gotta go out and ask. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Okay. Man, it, sound, it seriously sounds like a like a class, like a you go to the MSF or some type of beginner riding course, and but now we're we're doing something slightly different. So, it, and when I say slightly different, I mean it's quite a bit different. And uh, what would you say that would be like the biggest difference that be, biggest difference between a BRC or an ARC or a parking lot style training session uh, with whoever versus a track day? with a coach there like what would be the lessons learned that you could not learn in, in that parking lot uh, again it's at speed it's at speed you're gonna learn braking you're gonna learn vision and everything else the same but when you add the speed to it that is what is the ultimate difference between the two because you're coming up from a straight to a turn at well over 100 miles an hour depending on your bike yeah and you have to look in that split second where you got to turn, where the apex is, and all that stuff, and make that decision quickly. Yeah. You can't do that in a parking lot. No, no. You can refine the skill of braking and turning and looking and all that stuff in a parking lot, which I absolutely say do, but you string it together on a track and you can really see where your skills are at. Yeah, so you can, you can learn the fundamentals of your know, vision, uh, counter steering even in a parking lot but like direct steering and body position you can you can learn that but it's not really tested until you get to a track or do do it on a place that that allows at speed so I yep. think that's why people do mountain riding um, 
they're I guess they're testing their skills that they think they have in a parking lot out on the main road but the there's so many factors that could really screw them up and and like you know dirt on the road you know cross traffic you got I mean we got a crest of a hill here I mean, we don't have no idea what's on the other side and then right. they're just still going 100 miles an hour so it's uh, what, what what do you think the difference between Mount Lemon let's say you had the Mount Lemon to yourself and it's not 35 anymore versus uh, a track like what would you rather do Mount Lemon than a track? I mean, be honest. I mean, you probably get a good view on Mount Lemon, but do you think that would that good view would screw you up? You know, I I would after being in the track so much, I have actually not been on Mount Lemon on a bike. Oh, really? So, other than to do my reviews of the ones that I've done recently, I, yeah, you know, there's no desire to be fast on that mountain anymore. Uh, really? There's just so many variables and the track is just so perfect and removing those variables you know the case case in point i was riding on the track i had my mirrors out and i was looking at them on the track and it screwed me up oh wow because i you know on the street you you'll see in this video i'm looking everywhere like all this dirt on the side of the road you know i'm looking everywhere where on the track your focus is ahead of you and every once in a while to see if there's someone coming up on you that's okay. it so I had actually fold my mirrors in and lo and behold, my track time got better. I was less jerky. I didn't miss turns because I was focused on what the heck I was doing. Yeah. So it removes all that other surrounding stuff. Like these views are great and all, but people that want to go fast, these views are dangerous. Yeah, yeah. They can be if you stare at them too long. I mean, it's target fixation at that point. Oh, heck yeah. So we, at the very, very beginning of this, when we left QT, we were talking about how beginners have so much crap they have to figure out and, and work on. You know, they got vision, they got throttle, they got braking, all these different things. So if you go to a track and you pull in your mirrors, you're reducing some of the things that you have to do and you become better at whatever it is you're training, which would be body position. Somebody had fun here, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> so like body position and then uh, basically judgment of corners. So when it comes to that, you train, 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 and then you get on the road, you obviously have to put your mirrors back, you obviously have to do this, but are you thinking of, uh, like are you having to put a lot of brain power to the corner like we're coming up? Like, okay, where's the apex or is it just natural to you now? Uh, you know, it, it becomes more muscle memory. It's, uh, as anything, as you practice and practice, it becomes second nature and there's no thought to it. Uh -huh. And as a new rider, you know, that's what your controls have to be can't you shouldn't have to think about shifting down a gear like we're bogging down i had to shift down a gear yeah i know i'm going too slow for you am i <laughs> <laughs> no we're good it's not me it's the bike he's it's a raging animal it likes to be fast <laughs> but you know as a new rider you think about all this stuff and you have to get to the point where it is second nature so that way you can focus your brain power on the traffic on the hazards on the animals running out in front of you the swarm of bees you're about to run through you know stuff like that <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's kind of what I like to do, and you know, I, I kind of want to keep riding. Do you want to stop or do you want to ride? Or that's up to you. Want to want to go some more? Yeah, I, I'm good with going some more. Maybe going a little bit towards Vale, and I mean, we're having a great conversation. I think part of riding is is being able to because we've both been riding for a long time, so being able to talk, it's pretty easy, right? So yeah. like kind of going back to what we we're saying. Let's keep riding. This is great. Okay. Um, to go back to what. And everyone, by the way, this is Colossal Cave Mountain Park. It's an amazing little ride. But uh, to go back to what you were saying, yeah, so muscle memory, having to do it so many times. I mean, it's because you're training. You're tra You're not practicing. You're not going to the gym to do like a simple workout, and, and you're not practicing whatever it is you thought. I mean, you actually have a purpose. You have something you're moving towards, and then all of a sudden you are able to have muscle memory for that. You don't have to think about it, so you can... Uh, grab something else that's new and apply that brain power to it right yep so that's when I hear that and I hear that you can refine quite a bit when it comes to the track that to me tells me that like anybody everybody should do it new or experienced because whatever it is that they're having to think about like let's say at speed it's like oh man how am I gonna break and turn at speed well you go to the track you turn that into muscle memory so now you can actually enjoy your rides more because you have more confidence, you have the skill involved, and then you're even telling me that since you have the confidence, skill, and awareness of it all, it's like I don't need to go crazy on Mount Lemon. I don't need to go crazy on, on these 
mountain rides and now I'm a safer rider because my ego's in check, my situation awareness is, is where it should be and you're aware of the dangers of doing these really fast things on roads that you have no clue if there's a, a car stopped on the other side of the turn. Exactly, and one the kind of add to that is you actually find a limit. You find where you're comfortable most, and then on a track you find where you're not so comfortable, and then you kind of go to that point, you just kind of stay there a little bit, find it. So if you do go up the mountain again, you know, I don't want to be anywhere close to that point in a place like this. It, it, in a way, it's maturing you as a rider. It, it sounds a lot like risk management right there. I mean, yeah. you're finding the risks now, you know where they're at, you know where your skill is, you, you're not dealing with Dunning Kruger where you think you know more than you typically do. And a track definitely helps. And it, to me, a parking lot helped with that. And then for the at speed stuff, I had to do uh, training with fire trucks. Let's go ahead and turn left. Are, are you good with yep. gas or? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, we could always get more. There's yeah. a lot of gravel here. Yeah, this turn's sketchy because you're coming up on a hill where someone's flying. Yeah. Always take that extra second to look. Yeah, see, you, you're thinking of all these different risk factors, <laughs> and that's that's you know you're not having to think about your bike. I mean, it's just it's just uh, it's good stuff. Oh, what I was getting at before we turned. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I always do that. I always forget what the hell I'm talking uh, about. Dog, a squirrel. <laughs> what? Where? <laughs> <laughs> um, so like for me, I, I learned a lot of the high speed stuff. I learned a lot about the risks and consequences based off of the firefighter stuff. I mean, I would see kids crash motorcycles like kids like 17 18 yep. years old uh, crashing motorcycles crashing their cars because of speed because of poor management and and I knew from the fire service you have to train and train 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 so much to where you never utilize all your training because if you did then you're in a position where uh, you're you're shit out of luck if something else happens if you use everything so for us we always trained more than we needed so then we could use less and be in that position so when i saw a lot of these crashes i was like well i don't feel as confident going into a fire as i i, mean, I don't feel as confident going on a bike as i do going into a fire so i was like i need to train i need to practice i need to get to that confidence level because now i know the risks of it and i'm glad somebody else experienced them instead of me so that's how I got to my risk management, how I got to where I'm at with this. And I just kind of knew that training always has to precede actually doing the action. And I see it opposite with a lot of new riders and a lot of new people that get into motorcycles because they don't have that life experience at all. And hearing your life experience, I mean, we've already had a conversation before, but hearing your life experience and then hearing more about this track, it, People need to hear that. They, they, they literally need to, to hear that there's a way to practice and still have a great time on the road in the mountains that will make it safer and you'll enjoy it more. Um, do you enjoy riding up, like uh, you said you haven't done it in a while, but I mean, do you enjoy like riding like this right here just because it's relaxing now or, or do you have like this feeling you have to go fast on this nice straight road? Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, there's that saying, I'd rather ride a slow bike fast than a fast bike slow. Yeah. I don't like that saying because I like fast bikes and I can ride them slow and then when they need to be fast, they can be fast, whereas a slow bike will always still be slow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, you know, it's, I'm fine cruising like this, and I know there's a time and place. Yeah. You know, as you mentioned with your training in the military, while well, I was in the military, we overtrained as well, and it's for those instances that come up, and you have to react. You don't have time to sit there and analyze things. You actually have to rely on things on your training. And with riding, when stuff goes downhill, literally and figuratively. Yeah. You have to rely on what you know how to do. And if your training is garbage, you're gonna crash. Yeah. Uh, and there's some instances where you're gonna crash either way, but whether it's a bad one or a, a, a soft laydown is really gonna depend on what type of training you have. Yeah. And it, 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 I mean, it, it literally like in a, in a panic situation or an emergency situation, you fall to the lowest level of your training. And if you're training, I mean, you could be doing the most amazing thing and you did it once, but then an emergency happens where you need to use that one thing that you've only practiced once or trained once, and you're not gonna be able to do it. 
you have to constantly, constantly train that one thing and then now go to the next that you can learn and go to the next and go to the next. And it's just great. I, I think I think you and, and I and then people in public safety and you know military and all that stuff, we got a lot of cars coming right here. Yep. Got some intersections here, one turning with no signal, that's yep. nice. Yep. See, look at that. You start to you realize that stuff and, and that's what I was trying to get at is the public safety and the military. I mean, it kind of sets you up for like, dangerous situations. Um, I, and a lot of people don't have that life experience of being in dangerous situations and knowing full well what consequences could be. Um, so if you go to the track, you can gain that experience without having to deal with, you know, seeing dead bodies and stuff. So you can gain that with training and, and be relatively safe. So kind of getting back to, to track stuff, you know, how safe do you think it would be considered or comparatively to going on the mountain? I mean, like what are there, what are on the track that makes it safer? Oh, there's so many things. <laughs> First off, you're in full leathers. Okay. So your gear, for the most part, I mean, I see people in full leathers up the mountain. Uh, there's a reason why I kind of don't wear full leathers, but I do wear other protective gear. I just, if I'm on full leathers, I'm going all out and yeah, I don't want to do that on the mountain. It changes your mindset a little bit. So your gear is number one. Yeah. Number two, you don't have cars coming at you. Yeah, like this you right here. You don't have debris, <laughs> you don't have stoplights, you don't have animals. So there's that, all those other variables are gone. Mm -hmm. And do they have like a EMS or is it like a like a? Yeah, so there's there's ambulances right there on the track. Uh, there's EMT. You know, there's there's services out there that you want to uh, leave. Keep you safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been leading this whole time. I'm gonna follow you now because you have a better looking bike. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what happened? You're at a stoplight. See that skill. You're at a stoplight. Don't put your feet down, but your bike stopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you got EMS and you got like, you know, trained EMTs and stuff there. Is that, is that standard pretty much? Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and there's always, you know, unfortunate life flights are always a phone call away. Whereas if you're on the mountain and you crash, oh, someone's yeah. got to find you first, then call, get service. There, you have a lot of time, you know, there's that golden hour. Yep. And you, you eat a big chunk of that on the mountain. Oh, yeah. Whereas on the track, you crash, someone's right there. Yeah, and, and yeah, you call them up and be like, hey, we're at this track, and they know exactly where to go. I'm pretty sure they've been there before. You don't have to worry about mile markers and, and reception. And Well, there's actually ambulances already there. Oh, oh shoot, yeah. So they, yeah. they, they transport and everything. They, yep. have, you, have you ever been there when somebody crashed and had to be transported? Uh, nothing that bad. Uh, a buddy of mine had to be life flighted out at one point, um, and he was fine. Okay. Uh, I, you know, since that, but yeah, that's... Uh, the way I've seen people crash and go down and, and what have you. I mean, with car or bike, and they're they're right there. Oh, pothole. Ooh, yep. <laughs> so, I, but you still removed a lot of these factors of like these cars because, like, you know, on the street, typically. The motorcyclist strikes something it's gonna be another vehicle or it's gonna be like the the barrier on the wall because they're going yeah. too fast so like on a track like what is a typical crash like what is the most common type of crash uh low siding low siding is is, pro is one of the biggest ones because a lot of it has to do with the bike load as you go into a turn so people if you're not smooth on the brakes and you lean in and then you try to trail brake and you're harsh on it, you're going to dump the front end. Yeah. If your tires aren't warm enough, you're going to dump the front end. Low siding is pretty, pretty common. High siding, it happens, and that's usually throttle application or, again, something's on the track that makes your tires lose traction. And then gained it right uh, back. And yeah. yeah, you're just not smooth on the throttle. And that's, again, the track is all about being smooth. and. <laughs> yeah. It's way safer to low side there because you slide off in the gravel. Like yeah, that so one video you, you went over, he slid off in the gravel. There's no there's no wall there. Yeah. Yeah, so like right here, if we slid on that turn, I mean, we got a barbed wire fence probably like 20 feet off the side. Yeah. That's, that would suck. <laughs> so, it would not be pleasant. No. So yeah. like having the, the runoff at a track, you got EMS on standby, you got... 
you know, a dedicated location so if something did have to happen, everyone knows where it's at. And I'm pretty sure with the, the fire department, that if that's within their response area, they know the area, they have a tactical sheet on it so they know when to get in, how to get in. So, I mean, you don't have that on a mountain. No. So it's, so not only do you have mitigating factors for safety, you have uh, an open and inclusive uh, culture basically at the track. You get to practice the fundamentals that you learned in a parking lot. So if you're a brand new rider, if you wanted, just you know practice in the parking lot, then go to the track, or just go straight to the track and, and learn. Um, it, it sounds so intimidating when you hear about a track day and you know nothing else. But for me, hearing everything here, I mean, I already knew a lot, but actually, because I would read it and I'd kind of watch videos, but actually talking to somebody about it, it it's huge. It, it makes it to where it's like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It sounds just like a, like a class. Yeah, you know, it's just coming from someone that had those feelings. That's why I can tell you how it feels because I, I went through that. I went there, I'm like, oh my God, all these people are blowing by me. I'm way slow. I'm, I'm following a 390. Yeah. And I'm being passed still. I'm like, what in the world is going on? But I had a blast. And once things start to click, then you start picking up speed. Just like anything else, you, you start to learn it, you refine it, and then you start adding speed yeah. and efficiency and everything else. And you start to really tweak and refine stuff. So when it comes to, to you, like right now, uh, what, what do you remember as being like the first thing that you really felt like you had to refine and you really had to, to deal with? At the track? Yeah. Braking. Braking, okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, braking, I had my bike's brakes bled, so <laughs> they were super bitey. Yeah. And uh, it took a little bit to get used to. So braking to me is such a huge thing to really be smooth on. And it really takes a touch. It really makes you feel what, really understand your motorcycle, because every bike's different. Uh -huh. You know, like right there, some people would have braked when all you need is to let off the throttle a little bit because you have engine braking. Yeah, yeah. So understanding when brakes are needed, when they're not, how much, and how long really is the other thing. Trail braking is so huge, and it's not that I would sway new riders from doing it. I, I want, you need to understand it. Yeah. So it's like an awareness stage. So like with hazmat and TRT, technical rescue uh, technician, there's different the certificates, you know, there's the awareness stage of knowing what the technicians are really doing so you can assist. And then there's operations where you are learning and how to do it and be proficient. So that's how I equate it. So I, I mean, I don't know what the same is for a military, but yeah. uh, so when it comes to beginner with trail braking, it's like, hey, we want you to be aware that this is a skill that you can learn. And this is why it's important. So keep an eye on it. And if it's something you want to learn, let's go to we'll a go track. Right or left? Uh, let's go right. Right, and okay. and uh, it's like you know this is, you should learn this and then you go to a track and you got some experience and and you got some people teaching you so they can actually start doing it is that is that something that sounds about right I mean I'm making guesses here no no you're good um, you see it you watch it you monkey see monkey do yeah and but again make sure it's the right see yeah okay and you think uh, Cause you're saying you, you want to get be beginners to kind of get away from the, the trail braking but still be aware of it? Uh, it's not that I want them to get away from it. Okay. I, I want them to understand it before they really start to try to do it. Okay, so it's more of an application. And Correct. Like, okay. Yeah, because there's a way to do it and there's a way to really understand why you're trail braking into stuff. And if you don't understand, that's where these low sides come in. Okay. And that's something you could definitely, we got a lot of brake lights, so that's something definitely uh, you can do at, at a track. So, I mean, I learned how to trail brake uh, at a total control class, but I mean, it's in a parking lot. So, yeah. I mean, there's only so much you could do like in second and third gear. Um, so at a track, if I, could I apply those skills that I learned at like in a parking lot like that onto the track or is it more like, hey, uh, let's get you some more coaching no, actually, they, they translate pretty well. Okay. Because uh, on the parking lot, your speeds are kind of similar to what you would be going into a tight turn. Uh huh. So you're actually not hugely different. The only I think the only major difference is going to be your lean angle. Okay. 
you're probably going to be off the bike a little bit more. You're probably going to be leaned over a little bit farther. So we got a lot of traffic in front of us. I, I want to say what I notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that, so, do that. I like to be on certain parts of the road. I never am dead center to a car. You Good. see I'm on one side or the other. Yeah, I'm on the and other that's side. Because, <laughs> that's because I'm looking at this truck in front of me, mm -hmm. but I'm also looking about 15 cars down. There's a long bed truck down there. Yeah. And you can watch each one of these cars as they break, how much there's a body transition, how much their front end dives down. Yeah. And you can tell that's how much brake they're applying, which is a lot when you brake like that. And that creates a ripple effect all the way down here. So when I ride, if I have a truck in front of me like this, uh -huh. I gauge how far it is away from me. I sunk that in the back of my mind and then I start looking further. And when I do that, that becomes a peripheral reaction, which if you know your peripheral vision, you react faster yeah. than if you're dead on staring at it. Yeah. So you keep that in the back of your mind, you react faster because it changes from what you remember, but you can also react to what's going on down there. And is that something that you you can refine, or how do you, how would you refine that at a track? Because I mean, you're saying people are diving down or sitting up, you know, with the with same turns. thing on the track. Um, your body normally your taillights are taped up, so mm -hmm. on a track you're down here, and then when you brake you pop up. That's your brake light. You see people come up like this or come off the side. Uh -huh. They're braking hard and they're about to turn in, which tells you you're about to brake hard and turn in. So you can watch bikes on a track the same way. You can see them at a distance. Uh, you can actually see where they brake at a distance and go, okay, I can brake here now. Okay. Uh, okay, so you, you're able to, to take that muscle memory that you got from the track. And, and I'm sure, you know, through other life experiences, and I'm just kind of generalizing a lot of this. I mean, I'm yeah, pretty sure you, you learned a lot of this from riding on the street too but it, it becomes aware to you on the track even more. And, right. and you're able to, to do that. Man, so, so like the things that you learned was, was, was braking, you're focused on, you know, refining that. You said something about vision. So like vision, you obviously have to see before you can break, right? So, yeah. so like for your vision, how do you think that has improved uh, compared to just doing, you know, mountain riding? Uh, it improves a lot in the sense of the speed that you pick things up. Yeah. Because you are traveling a speed, like I mentioned, I would go into turns and I'd miss an apex or I'd feel like I'm rushing. When you feel like you're rushing, it's because you're not looking far enough ahead. Uh -huh. You're not analyzing far enough ahead. Or your eyes are stuck down when they need to be looking up. And the vision is just... Sorry, I paused there because that guy no, made the no. turn. I, I, I was about to say, it's like we that's what I do on my vlogs. I'll, I'll cut that part out because, I, you know, traffic takes precedence, right? You know, just yeah. you have to do it. You have to stop talking so you can focus on air right here. Yeah, you know, little I, things like that. This little Volkswagen facade is a little too brake happy. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, like I said, the vision becomes faster. And yeah. you analyze things much quicker at the track because that's all you have to do. Mm -hmm. And it really plays into this on the street because now you can look at stuff, analyze it really quickly, and go, oh, this Passat's reacting too quickly to yeah. brakes. Like they're braking for no reason. Yeah, the car in Let front of them hasn't braking. Yeah. Let off the gas. But I can see four cars ahead of them, their brake lights aren't on. Yeah. Which tells me that the cars in front of them are actually still moving and they're braking because they're either not paying attention or yeah. they, they're looking at me too much thinking I'm too close to them. <laughs> or it's because it's you have a nice bike. <laughs> they're true. like they like that thing <laughs> that's always a possibility <laughs> man it, it, i learned quite a bit from this man i appreciate you, you, you taking the time to talk to me i know you, you're like hey you want to go for a ride this weekend and i turned it into like a q a <laughs> hey you know what man it's all good i i like i like sharing the knowledge that i've gained you know and putting it out there because the stuff that i say isn't from hearsay it's from actually doing it it's from having people show me the yeah. proper way to do things and you know some people aren't going to have the luxury of experiencing those things so if we can share them that could make them a better rider perfect yeah i think it's that awareness thing that, that we were talking about it's like maybe they're now aware that hey i should do a track day or at least uh, look it up and see what it's all about i would do it i need to do that <laughs> 
They're fun, man. They're addicting. You're going to hate me if you do one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for uh, talking to me, man. Uh, where, where can we find you? Uh, like on Instagram or YouTube? Uh, so on Instagram, it's C underscore the word one only X Ram. Awesome. So everything's spelled out. <laughs> Awesome. I'll put that in the, the description. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. it's a mouthful. <laughs> um, same thing with uh, YouTube. It's one only X Ram. Everything's spelled out. Awesome. Yeah. All right, All right man. Well, thanks for uh, for talking to to me about about the track stuff. For now, <laughs> I hope the audio comes through. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I could be at home, and be like, all right, I can't use it. <laughs> It's like every other word, it's only your voice. Like yeah. you, you duped me, you didn't record me at all. <laughs> <laughs> My 360 camera died, so I mean, that's why I was like, oh, we gotta probably wrap that part up, so. Yeah, my camera is pretty close to dying. Cool, we'll just let these things run out. And I'll cut this whole part out now.